what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at it again with another video so we just finished up the live stream reactions for crown jewel and uh i must say the show as a whole was kind of middle of the road it wasn't bad by any means but it wasn't too many things that were like super memorable that i would say oh this is a must watch pay-per-view or ple but there are some good things on the show that i must mention and must talk about i was able to take notes during the show as best as i possibly could so i appreciate everyone that was part of the live stream on the in the clutch page y'all know i have to give my thoughts and opinions on what went down at crown jewel so we're gonna get right into this waste no time so they started off the show with seth rollins versus drew mcintyre crowd was excited for both seth and drew before they even locked up and this crowd really seemed to be pro drew crowd was really pro drew for any move he did they would pop any offensive move he was uh able to to uh do to seth rollins crowd was going crazy for him like he seemed like the bigger baby face in this exchange seth goes for the dive on drew drew catches him and then does an overhead suplex to him on the outside on the ground outside the ring and we know that seth has had this the this bad back issue that's what uh pretty much has been like part of his character development with other opponents we know his back's not at 100 percent so him being suplexed onto the mat outside the ring looked pretty brutal he was definitely selling it i don't think he had to sell it looked like he definitely hurt seth tries to go for the falcon arrow but drew was able to reverse it into his own suplex once again targeting the back drew slams seth uh back on the edge of the stairs look a, a very brutal spot then he proceeds to pick him up and slams his back onto the edge of the ring you know the hardest part of the ring so at this point it's uh it's drew's objective to do whatever he can to take out seth rollins back as you would to capitalize on uh your opponent's weakness and what's crazy during all these moves that happened in the seth the crowd is going crazy for seth i mean going crazy for drew mcintyre then seth hits the stomp and drew uh, kicks out and that was a really that was like one of the first false finishes of the match drew kicking out of the stomp then drew hits the claymore but seth kicks out and that was another close false finish crowds chanting this is awesome crowd was really electric for the very first match of the show and as we get to the end shoot uh seth ducked the claymore kick because you know drew was setting up for the claymore kick seth ducked it and then he hit drew mcintyre with a pedigree and stomp combo for the win and he ended up getting the win there and you can see after the fact as seth rollins is celebrating drew is kind of like he's in this trance like he's you can tell he's he's frustrated he's upset he's like just staring off into the distance i'm not sure what that means but i do not think they're done with seth rollins and Drew McIntyre, I do think maybe Seth will turn up the rogueness a bit more against Seth to try to take the championship from him. So this is not a one and done situation. I do think they have some more story to tell here. But it was a good opening match. I enjoyed it. Crowd enjoyed it. Crowd was really lit into this match. This was fun. I was not expecting the World Heavyweight Championship match to be on first. But nevertheless, this was entertaining. So as Seth is celebrating, he's still sore, still kind of battered and bruised. Damian Priest's music hit. And Damian Priest is coming out there with the Money in the Bank briefcase. So he's trying to cash in. He goes to the referee. Seth is looking at him. And he's telling the ref, I'm trying to cash in. And before they could announce it, a hooded figure, a person in a black hoodie, attacks damian priest throws him in like launches him into the ring post or whatnot and then you see it's Sami Zayn. he takes his hood off 
and he takes the briefcase and he runs through the crowd as Damian Priest is chasing after him, trying to get his money in the bank briefcase. Sami Zayn hit a very good lick on Damian Priest. Sami Zayn has made it his mission. He says he's going to do whatever it takes to ruin the judgment day at any cost. That is his mission, and it seems like he's succeeding so far. He was able to stop Damian Priest from cashing in, and he stole his briefcase. Very interesting to see how things will play out with that. <laughs> but it was a funny visual of Sammy running with the briefcase and Damian Priest chasing after him through the crowd. So we cut to the back. Um, Drew McIntyre is like sitting on one of the production crates. Once again, he has that same intense look of disappointment, anger, rage. And then as you see that, you know, as you see him, you know, just sitting there, the camera pans to the left. And Rhea Ripley walks into, you know, his area. And they look at each other. And Rhea just sh shrugs at him and walks off. So whatever conversation they had, apparently it didn't go to plan. But she shrugged at him and walked off to get ready for her match. So, the next match was the Fatal 5-Way match. Rhea versus Nia versus Raquel versus Zoe versus Shayna Baszler. And I was looking really, I was looking forward to this match because... They actually, you know, they have some of the main event players in the women's division all fighting for uh, Rhea's championship. But overall, this match wasn't bad by any means, but you, the crowd wasn't as into it as you would thought they would have been. And this crowd was very fickle in, in the matches. Like, they would be entertained for some parts, but a lot of parts, they would just be kind of quiet, not really interacting or showing that, that energy. So, everyone else had normal interests when they came out. Maria, because she's the champ, because people love Rhea, Rhea got a special entrance. She had some guys lined up. They had the smoke or whatever, and then her music finally hit, and she comes out through the smoke. And I already knew Rhea wasn't going to lose here, but they confirmed it with her being the only one to get a, a pretty cool entrance there. So... That was a noticeable thing I noticed right before the match. Um, I didn't really take too many notes here because at one point, Dub was trying to get into the stream. So I was trying to get that all situated. But I did. There was a, a noticeable spot in the match. Shayna had... Um, well, actually, no. Before we get into that, before the match even started, like when, well, when the match actually started, you would think... Everybody was going to jump on Nia, but Nia rolled her big ass out the ring and let everybody else fight each other. I was kind of a, you know, it's one of those things where I was expecting everyone to go out to Nia since Nia's been trying to take everybody out, but she just rolled out the ring and then they just started to fight each other. But after that, it's a good spot with Shayna. Shayna had Rhea and Raquel in some type of leg lock submission. Then Nia tries to come into the mix and stop her, and she not uh, Shayna puts Nia in some type of real naked, real naked chokehold. So she's choking out Nia while having Rhea and Raquel in some type of submission hold with their legs. She had three people in some sort of submission hold, and I thought that was a very, very cool visual. That that look that was dope. I wish they would give Shayna some more of those type of moments because that looked dominant i ain't never seen someone have three people in some sort of submission hold or whatnot but towards the end of the match um like i said at this point i had to stop taking notes i was trying to get dubbed into the stream but the end of the match uh Rhea ends up hitting the riptide from i want to say it was the second rope the second or the top row i believe it was the top rope Rhea hints zoe with the riptide, while Raquel is on top of Shayna pinning her, and when she hits, you know, Zoe hits uh, Raquel in the back, and obviously the force and the momentum, Shayna's at the bottom of that, so she feels all the impact, they both roll off, and then Rhea ends up pinning Shayna for the one, two, three. It was a cool little finish, Um, you know, Zoe getting hit with the riptide from that high up to stop a pinning combination from Raquel pinning Shayna only for Rhea to capitalize on that. It was okay. I think 
this match would have probably been a lot better in the States. I think the crowd would have responded a lot better. It was some cool stuff here happening. But overall, the right person won in retaining. It wasn't nothing too crazy. It'll be interesting to see what they go, uh, where they go with these ladies going forward. Now, this match next, the way this ended was very surprising. John Cena versus Solo Sokoa. Now, I initially thought uh, John Cena was going to win this match. I really did. But the way John Cena cooked Solo on Friday Night SmackDown, cooked him in an air fryer, and the fact that they've been, they've been talking about John Cena hasn't won a match since 2018, in my head, I'm thinking they'll probably give him one good win here before he goes back off to Hollywood. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> so, when John Cena comes out there, crowd is super mega pro John Cena. Anything John Cena did, it didn't matter. He was getting a large reaction from the crowd. This is when the crowd woke back up. John Cena chants uh, were loud. Crowd chanting, you still got it for all the moves he was hitting. Crowd started chanting to uh, Solo, you suck. When Solo started getting uh, offense and started taking over the match, they were booing Solo like the biggest heel because he's beating up on the hero, John Cena. Solo was dominating at that part, at this part of the match when I was taking notes. Solo stays trying to hit John Cena with the Samoan spike, but he keeps ducking it. And that was the overall message and theme of this match. John Cena basically trying to avoid the Samoan spike. They built this match off of if Solo hits the Samoan spike, it's over. That was all it was. John Cena, every time Solo about to go for it, John Cena ducks it. John Cena ducks it. What not? Crowd going crazy for the five moves of dude. It's crazy seeing the crowd lose their mind over the five moves of doom that we have seen so many times, but they were losing it like it was the first time they've ever seen it. Even when he hit the you can't see me, they were going crazy. John uh, hit Solo with a choke slam or a close two count. Then, then at this point, things started to get a little bit intense. Solo really turned it up. Solo did like this running dive at John, but with the Samoan spikes. It was like a running Samoan spike. He hit him once. Then he hit John again with the Samoan spike. This time he was standing. Then he grabs him and hits him again with another Samoan spike. Now John is, is looking bad for him. It When I tell you each Samoan spike that landed, the energy in the crowd slowly but surely kept dying to the point where they were just shocked because after that third one you're like why is he not going for the pin michael cole is asking on commentary why is he not going for the pin that first one maybe he didn't get all of it second samoa spike to john john definitely got all of that the third one he definitely got all of that why is he not going for the pin but no Solo has some devious uh, ideas. I don't know if Roman told him to do this or if he came up with this on his own. But Solo said, you want to cook me on Friday? I got you, my boy. He proceeds while John is just pretty much out of it. He picks him up by his head, his hair, and he just proceeds to start hitting him with multiple Samoan spikes over and over and over and over and over and over. And at this point, I'm thinking the match is gonna, the ref's gonna call off the match. Like, yo, this is, he's defenseless. And then finally, after the multiple Samoan spikes to the throat, while John is pretty much unconscious, he goes for the pin for the one, the two, and the three. And Solo Sokoa beats John Cena in a very definitive fashion by Samoan spiking him to death in the middle of the ring with no assistance and the crowd was stunned stunned i hadn't seen john cena get dominated and destroyed like this since he got destroyed by brock lesnar in that one-sided championship match where brock 
gave this nigga 16 or 17 suplexes. That's the last time I've seen John Cena get destroyed like this. And the fact that they gave Solo that honor. They gave Solo the honor to destroy this nigga and to send him packing back to Hollywood because I believe this was his last appearance for a while. I think he's going back to Hollywood. I don't know. Anything can change. That was crazy. Destroyed him. Got out the ring. And that's when, you know, they cut out Solo's music. John Cena's starting to move around, starting to wake up. And the crowd is chanting, thank you, Cena. Crowd giving him, giving him a standing ovation. And it did, it did seem like the way they were framing it, they're, they're following up the ramp, the camera crew. He turns around and look at the fans. Fans still give him a, giving him a standing ovation, a round of applause. And it seemed like the way they framed it up, that this may be John Cena's last match. Even Michael Cole has said when Solo was leaving the ring that Solo Sokoa has retired John Cena. We don't know if it's true or official, but that's the story that they're going with. And that's how it looked. The way they set it up in John Cena's ex uh, exit. Was that his last match? We don't know. But it's going to be very interesting to see what they do with Solo. Because Solo, they built him up as this monster now. So we'll see what happens. Now, we got to talk about the Miz M, uh, the Miz M, like, I keep saying MTV. I wouldn't say MTV, but the Miz TV segment. Look, I didn't really care for this segment. I know this segment was for people over there in Saudi, the person they had on uh, as a guest for Miz TV, he was, um, apparently he's a comedian, he's in a movie, well known out there. So they were really happy for him to be out there. And people were actually happy for the segment. They were enjoying this segment more than some of the matches that are coming up next. I'll be honest with you. Because after this segment, the crowd's energy just jumped off a fucking cliff. But uh, I didn't really care for this. Grayson Waller comes out there. And basically, it was a battle of wrestling tv segments the grayson waller effect became uh a thing people started changing out the stuff that happened in the in the Miz tv segment they even changed the graphics to the grayson waller effect so it became a battle of segments who has the better wrestling segment ultimately the guy uh i, I can't think of his name right now so don't take it personally but the, the special guests out there Ends up getting into a confrontation with him. Um, they end up going back and forth. Grayson Waller kicks him. The Miz ends up attacking Grayson Waller. And then they both pretty much a tag team attack uh, Grayson Waller. And then Grayson Waller gets hit with the Skull, for, uh, skull uh, Christian finale. And uh, that was it. But once again, the crowd loved this. The Saudi crowd, they were going crazy for this. And then that energy disappeared after this segment. So for them, they enjoyed the uh, the Miz TV segment for us back at the States. I didn't really give two fucks about this. Wanted this off my screen as fast as possible. Next match, Rey Mysterio versus Logan Paul. This one, in my opinion, was a good match. I enjoyed the match. Was it the best Logan Paul match we've seen so far? No, not in my opinion. Do I feel like it could have been a little bit better? considering you have a Ray out there. Yes, but I still enjoyed it. It's just the crowd was, they weren't into this match as I thought they would have been, considering they were just excited for the last segment, the Miz TV segment. So, um, but Logan uh, pulling up to the venue uh, and the, in the rampway in this dune buggy that he had been, been in all day. That was a pretty cool entrance. Logan put uh, padding Ray at the top of his head at the beginning of the match. He did it at the um, the weigh-in on SmackDown, and then he did it again at the beginning of the match, showing the ultimate disrespect. Logan hitting a springboard uh, moonsault to Ray in the middle of the ring. Very impressive. We all know uh, Logan Paul's uh, in-ring ability. Logan, pretty much at this point in the match, was dominating Ray. He was really able to impose his his size on Ray and was trying to keep Ray grounded as much as possible. Even Ray tried to hit an early 619, but he wasn't able to because 
once again, uh, Logan has the size advantage, and he was able to, you know, counter those moves. Anything Ray Dan would try to do, he was able to counter it. At the, the turning point in the match is when uh, Logan hit the ring post as Ray dodged him, and that kind of shifted the tides of the match because uh, Logan was running at full speed. Ray was in the corner. He dodged it. Ray hit the post um, with his shoulder, and then he fell out the ring. Um. And I had to make note of this. Even after that, the crowd was pretty quiet for this match, which is, once again, wasn't bad, but the crowd was definitely quiet for this match. Uh, Logan ended up hitting uh, a buckshot lariat that he almost didn't land, but he still landed on his feet, and he hit it on Ray um, for a close uh, kick out. Um, let's see. Now, this one was cool right here. This spot... I, and I love what they're doing with Logan. It's like every time he has a match, he improves his wrestling, like, like I guess you could say his wrestling moves. He adds more wrestling moves to his uh, repertoire. I think he even did like a warrior splash. And this time, Logan hit a moonsault fallaway slam to Ray for a close two count. Ray kicked out from the top rope. Beautiful. That was my favorite spot of the match. Once again, you may not like Logan, but he is he's fantastic in the ring. The moves he's able to learn and make look good, very, very, very impressive. So we're starting to get to the, the, the shenanigans of this match. All right, so Logan was uh, gifted some brass knucks from one of his uh, friends. The ref didn't see it. He slid him some brass knucks, but then Logan ended up dropping the brass knucks as he was trying to use it, trying to hide it from the referee and Rey Mysterio. Then the friend goes to the other side of the ring. He's ducking down. He's staying low and he's trying to give Logan the brass knucks again. But then Santos hops the barricade and he stops him and he picks up the brass knucks. The friend's like, oh, whoa, wait, 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 don't do it. But then all of a sudden, Santos puts the brass knucks back on the ring mat and chases off the friend instead of actually holding the brass knucks to chase off the friend with. So he put the, the weapon that he know Logan's about to use to cheat back in the ring. Obviously, Logan picks up the brass knucks. Ray is at, Ray doesn't know, Rep doesn't know. Ray's uh, doing, about to do like a springboard move off the top rope. And Logan clocks him with the brass knucks. And he hides the evidence in his in his tights. And uh, Logan gets the one, two, three win. And he is your new United States champion. Crowd was booing or whatnot. And uh, yeah, uh, it, it, it's, I don't have a problem with Ray losing this match. I just think the ending you could have you could have did something different with that. And even at the end of the match, Logan goes over to Ray and tells him, I love you, man. I love you, Ray, bro. Great match. And then Ray's telling him, I know what you did. Like what are you talking about? And it's so funny because Logan's such a prick. He's trying to pass off like he's a good competitor when, when we saw him cheat, right? So, the only thing I can excuse this ending it with is if Ray talks to Santos and asks him, why the hell did you put that back, the brass nooks, back in the ring? You literally helped him out. And maybe Santos feels offended because it wasn't his intentions. And maybe they do something there. Because if it doesn't get acknowledged, because it didn't look like Santos was turning heel, it, it'd be different if he looked at Ray if he looked at Logan and like say he chased him off, he came back or whatever and the brass knucks were there or say he chased off the friend, he has the brass knucks and then he comes back to Ray's aid but he slides, the, he puts the brass knucks back in the ring and walk away. Now that would have been different. You can still get the same effect of Ray losing but now it's an extra reason why he lost on top of it just being Logan just cheated. This was... It just didn't make sense. It's just he put it back there, the brass knucks back in the ring, only for 
Logan to still use him anyway. So be interested to see what they do there. I hope they acknowledge that so it makes a little bit more sense. But overall, the match was actually pretty entertaining. I enjoyed the match. It's just the crowd didn't give a fuck <laughs> for the majority of it. But this was fun. I enjoyed this match. Could have been a lot better, but, you know, I, I, I can't complain. Logan, <laughs> once again, still pulling out some impressive moves, man. So I got to give him credit for that. Next match, EO versus Bianca. EO was focusing pretty much the majority of this match. And a, a, a lot of Bianca matches, they focus on Bianca's knees and legs. And that's that's what happened here. Bia, uh, EO was focusing on Bianca and her bad knee. Crowd was definitely quiet for this match as well. It's like they just were on mute. They didn't, people weren't caring. The match, uh, it was actually not bad in my opinion. I think if this match happened in the States, I think it probably would have got a, a bigger reception, bigger energy from the crowd. But I enjoyed this. I was enjoying for what I was seeing on the match. It was a nice back and forth. Really, really, uh, Bianca trying to overcome EO's offense on attacking her, uh, her knee. Uh, Bianca at one point in the match kept slamming EO multiple times. EO would run up and she would just body slam her. EO would run up again, body slam her, showing how strong Bianca really is. Of course, shenanigans were going to ensue. You know, damage control was going to get involved. Bailey comes out there to distract the ref. And at one point, it looked like she was about to be able to capitalize on it, but she wasn't really able to. And that's when I think it was like a pitting combination. And uh, Bianca was able to kick out. EO looks at Bailey because Bailey's trying to help her. And EO's telling her, like, yo, I got this. Go move. I got this. And that's the story they've been telling with EO and Bailey. It's been like that. I don't need your help. I got this. So EO really didn't want Bailey out there. And we start to understand why in the long run. So uh obviously uh Bianca's trying to even, you know, trying to fight her way from a two-on-one situation. So uh Bianca starts going after uh Bailey outside and even EO starts to get into the mix, but EO's able to uh Bianca's able to dodge EO from one of her attacks, and EO ends up accidentally punching Bailey outside of the ring. Then um Bianca's able to capitalize throws EO into the barricade, and then Bianca's like, Hey, I'm I'm sick of you, Bailey. Thought I got rid of you on SmackDown. Bianca picks up Bailey, puts her on the shoulder. On her shoulder, shoulders, and it looks like she's about to hit the KOD on her again as she's walking her to the announcement table. And all of a sudden, somebody pulls off, uh, off uh Bailey off of uh, uh, Bianca's shoulders, and the rumors and speculations was true. Kyrie Sane was the person that pulled off Bailey off of Bianca's shoulders, and she ends up attacking. Bailey out. I'm attacking Bianca outside of the ring, and then it, it looks like uh Bianca's not even gonna make the 10 count, but she's able to get back in the ring just in time, only for her to ultimately end up losing <laughs> in the end. <laughs> Kyrie um EO is able to capitalize off that attack from Kyrie Sane, and uh Kyrie Sane, I mean EO ends up winning the match. And then after the match, Kyrie and EO begin to jump Bianca. So Bianca can't catch a break to save her life. She starts getting jumped by Kyrie Sane and EO. They start stomping her out. And then EO goes, uh, Kyrie Sane goes to the top rope and she hits. I love her fucking elbow drop. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. She hits a beautiful elbow drop on Bianca. And then they hug and embrace EO and Kyrie saying, but you see Bailey looking at this uh, like on the outside, like, wait, what's going on here? Like, obviously, Bailey didn't know that Kyrie saying was coming back to help EO. Bailey didn't know that. So she's pro obviously she's not even a part of damage control. So she's trying to figure out what's going on here. Bailey looked confused. EO and Kyrie saying. They look happy, embracing each other, and Ky uh, EO retains 
her uh championship as i expected there was gonna be some shenanigans and not heard the rumors so it was cool to see eo out there i mean i keep fucking it up eo and Kyrie Sane, they're not the same person it's good to see Kyrie Sane back in wwe but once again i think if this happened her returning the way she did if this happened somewhere else and in a in another another city uh another country potentially maybe <laughs> I think the crowd would have went even more crazier for Kyrie's return and how she returned, but it was some noise, but people didn't give a fuck. <laughs> now, now I must talk about this match, and this is my favorite match of the show. People definitely gave a fuck about this one. Cody versus Damian. Damian Priest came out there with the tag titles. He was pissed, obviously, for what happened with him and Sami Zayn, so he's not He's no smiles, no nothing, just strict, straight business. He's ready to fight. Cody comes out there to Thunder's reaction of, whoa, like everybody going crazy. Power's going crazy. They're singing along his theme song. They were lit. And before the bell can ring, while Cody's taking off his gear, his uh, Homelander gear, Damian Priest, as you can tell, pacing upset he said i'm sick of this and he attacks cody before the match start and we start things off hot and fast boy they they cody's getting into his old school bag they're going back and forth they started off pretty quick high intensity uh at one point cody's about to you know he clears off the table like man i'm about to put you through the table bro i'm sick of this and uh <laughs> damian priest hit him with a nice clothesline Cody sold it. He flipped upside down, which around all over the place. He sold that clothesline. Um, at one point, Cody has Damian Priest in the crossroads, and he looks like he's about to hit him with the crossroads onto one of the announce table. But Damian Priest was able to reverse it, and he hits his version of the crossroads, but it's called the reckoning. It used to be his finishing move, but he hits it. On Cody, onto the table. I thought that was a pretty cool spot. I didn't know he had his version of that same move. And I guess it makes sense why he doesn't do it. Only because it literally looks like the crossroads. So it would be kind of confusing. But I did, I do like that he did pull out a move that he used to do in his repertoire. And it, and it just so happens to be on Cody. And he hit it on the table. Cool looking finisher. Well, a cool, cool looking move. And, uh, you know, it was pretty effective for the time peeing. At one point, we get them back into the ring. Crowd's chanting. Uh, <laughs> where's your briefcase, Damien? You know, where's your briefcase? Because they know he doesn't have the briefcase. You know, crowd's trying to, you know, really get in Damien Priest's head. And then, as, as anything, Judgment Day going to have the shenanigans. You have Finn Balor come out. He's walking down the ramp. And what now, you know, he's about to get into the match, get involved. Cody sees this. Then out of nowhere, J.D. McDonough tries to attack Cody from behind, but Cody's able to punch him, but the numbers game is starting to catch up. Then uh, Finn Balor signals to someone in the back, and then you see Dominic come out there with a steel chair. But, of course, it was all for nothing because Jay Uso comes out of nowhere and super kicks Everybody, super kicks JD, super kicks Finn Balor, super kicks Dominic. He picks up the steel chair that Dominic drops and he chases them all away. One guy chases away three men. The power of the super kick, man. I don't know what to tell you. So he chases them all away. Once again, this match was fun. Crowd was into it. I was enjoying every second of this. And, um, uh, uh, even Cody hit a beautiful top rope Cody cutter to Damian Priest for the close two count. Oh, very close two count. Love that near fall. Love his top rope uh, Cody cutter. But at the end of the match, it took three crossroads to put away Damian Priest. He hit one, got him right back up. Hit two, got him right back up. Hit three, and he put away Damian Priest for the one, two, three victory. Enjoyed this match. Favorite match of the show. I love this match. This was fun. Crowd was electric the entire time. <laughs> they didn't give a damn about EO, Bianca, and Kyrie Sane returning, but they definitely gave a damn about Cody and Damien, which 
I expected. And of course, the main event, Roman versus LA Knight. You know how this was going to end. The question is, was it going to be the same way as it always ends? That was for us to find out. LA Knight comes out and you see a sea of LA Knight signs. LA Knight, yes, signs. They're literally everywhere. Crowd was mega excited to see LA Knight. And it was a beautiful sight to see. LA Knight deserves that uh, that love that he's getting right now. So it was cool to see that. They were super electric for LA Knight. And as Roman Reigns is coming down the ramp, taking his sweet old time as he comes down the ramp, Michael Cole is listing off the stats. And this is a very interesting stat, stat that I didn't really think of. He, Roman Reigns, as, as he's been the champ for like over three and a half years, he only has 29 title defenses. In three and a half years, he's only defended the title 29 times. That's mind-blowing when you think about it. Y'all let me know. Do y'all feel that's a good thing or a bad thing? Jeez, man. My man, fuck showing up to work. <laughs> oh, man. And some of these title defenses are against the same person. So that's a thing, too. At the beginning of the match, before they even locked up, before the bell rung, while they were still doing the entrances, they were talking, they trash. The ref is trying to separate them. I love it. This was good. Uh, LA Knight start with great offense, and then Roman stops LA Knight to mock him, as we know Roman to do. Once you get a little bit of offense, he stops you, and he starts talking trash. He hits the LA Knight. Get that trash up out of here. Love it, love it, love it. Um, at one point, Paul Heyman trying to get his big fat ass in the ring, but couldn't get in the ring. Like he was on the ground below and he was trying to get up on the ring apron, but his big ass couldn't get up there. And of course it was a distraction as uh, Roman was able to capitalize off the distraction. Uh, Roman drop uh, LA Knight into the steel steps, then uh, throws him back into the steel steps again, as they were on the outside. Uh, Roman's telling the crowd to pipe down as he starts to take control over the match. Which is what he likes to do. Like, yeah, be quiet. Be quiet, y'all. Y'all, let me let me take care of this. Um, at one point in the match, I think the crowd started chanting CM Punk. And someone had sent me a clip before the show started. The crowd was just chanting CM Punk. I don't know what that was about. That was kind of random because the crowd was actually into this match. Anything LA Knight did, the crowd was chanting, like going crazy. Anything Roman did, they were chanting, asshole, and you suck. So it was really weird that they were chanting CM Punk because they weren't bored. So I don't know what that was about. Um, Roman was dominating this point in the match, talking trash to the fans as they were calling him an asshole. Like I said, they were invested. And then I started hitting the yell punches as the crowd was all behind him when he started to get some offense and started hitting the yell punches on him. Crowd's going crazy with each punch. Then Roman stops LA Knight momentum with a nice, beautiful rock bottom. LA Knight kicked out of the Superman punch for a, a close two count. Very close two count. Then, of course, the shenanigans. <laughs> you see Solo at the top of the ramp. Uh, security officials, they all there for Solo because they this nigga just killed John Cena. We don't need him messing up this match. So Solo's at the top of the ramp trying to get down there to assist Roman Reigns. And then, of course, you knew uh, Jimmy was going to be involved at some point. And uh, Jimmy ends up pulling Roman out of the ring. Uh, Roman uh, was able to punch LA Knight and then Roman hits the spear on him for a very close two count. This was the first spear. Roman thought it was over with the distraction with Jimmy's help. He was able to punch him. Then he was able to get back into the ring and hit him with the spear. But it was a very close two count. Um, now, this is when, uh, you know, he starts to slow down the pace. Roman gets frustrated. He puts LA Knight in the guillotine chokehold. And... It's like maybe a couple minutes. I want to say maybe like a minute or two where he's in this chokehold and it looks like he's about to pass out. But then he starts to fight out of it. And the crowd starts to hype him up. Love those parts of the match. Gets the crowd invested. And, you know, makes you believe, you know, he can overcome uh, the odds right here. 
LA Knight hits the BFT, the blunt force trauma on Roman, and it looks like it's over. It's done. You got yeah. it's fucking Jimmy, bro. It's, it's always Jimmy, isn't it? But Jimmy puts Roman's foot on the bottom rope to stout the uh, to stop the, the three count. But at that point, it was look, it looked like it was over. So Jimmy saved him. And that's when LA Knight gets pissed. LA Knight goes after after Jimmy or whatnot. He starts attacking him. And then he starts repeatedly hitting his head on the announce table as the crowd's chanting, yes, yeah, 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 just over and over and over. Roman tries to stop him, and he's like, nah, I'm going to do the same thing to you. So he starts hitting Roman's head on the announce table over and over and over, crowd chanting, yeah, this was pretty cool moment. Um, Then at one point, LA Knight throws Jimmy through the other announce table and Jimmy showed it as the table broke he just laid face down he never moved again that was fantastic and you see Roman well you don't see but Roman's off screen after LA Knight does that and Roman spears LA Knight through the barricade we've seen that spot so many times so it was like all right they're, they're hitting the usual beats here is the referee gonna get knocked out yes yet yeah, that's what we were expecting so he uh spears LA Knight through the barricade, rolls LA Knight back into the ring, and then Roman hits the spear again on LA Knight for the one, two, three. Technically, I don't think it was a spear to Roman, uh a spear from Roman to LA Knight through the barricade. I I, I mean I guess you could call that a spear, more like a tackle. You tackle him through the barricade, but we can call that a spear, whatever. But LA Knight ends up getting hit with the spear in the ring for the second time for the one, two, three uh victory. And Roman retains as we all expected. This match, it was okay. It was okay. Was I surprised? No. Was I happy that LA Knight had that reaction that he got from the crowd? Of course. Did they protect LA Knight? Of course. It took. It took uh, uh, multiple distractions. It took Jimmy. It took him getting speared through a barricade. They protected him. But it's just one of those things where it's like, how many times have we seen this story? I think for me, the last good Roman Reigns match was him against his uh, his cousin, uh, Jay. Because the story behind that was so damn good. It's just they they they. They didn't, the ending didn't really work too much for me. But the story behind that match was good. You actually believed just a bit that maybe they pull an audible and maybe Jay is the one to beat Roman. That's my last, in my opinion, that's his last great, his last really good match so far this year. Obviously, it just recently happened. But the point I'm trying to make is the story there was really good. Here, we love LA Knight, but I think a lot of us knew he wasn't going to win this. He wasn't going to win this. And it just, it's one of those things. They they booked themselves in this corner. Whoever faces him, it's, it's really going to be hard to make people buy in to him being the one to get the job done. But nevertheless, this was fun. This was entertaining. And uh, I definitely enjoyed it for what it was. Um, it's something we've seen. Uh, so many times as, uh, you know, when it comes to Roman Reigns matches. The only thing they didn't do, a referee didn't get knocked out. So, I guess that's a plus. But, yeah, overall, this show, like I said, was middle of the road. It's not something that I would just go back and be like, oh, I got to watch this again. Um, outside of maybe the Cody and Damian match, that would probably be the match I may watch again. And just the shock value of what Solo did to John Cena. Everything else was cool, you know. The first match uh, for the World Heavy Championship, it was cool too. It wasn't, the crowd was lit. I enjoyed it, you know. It's, once again, it's not something that I just, I gotta go back and watch again. So, for me, middle of the road, if I have to give it on a scale of 1 to 10, I give this most likely a 6.5, bro. 6.5, 7 at best, but most likely 6.5. It was nothing on here just egregiously bad. It's just, it's not something that I'm just going to be like, oh, this was super memorable, in my opinion. I feel like 
the I feel like we've seen a lot of how these matches play out or in certain situations with the the fatal five way I felt like maybe the crowd was a little bit more interested in that it could have came off better on television or you know for the viewing experience but overall there was nothing on here just bad it was just okay okay except the cody and damian match that was that was great i enjoyed that so y'all comment down below let me know what was your favorite match from this show what was, let me know what was your least favorite match uh also let me know what y'all rate uh rate the show as a whole on a scale of one to ten for me six and a half middle of the road could have been better but i think we've seen a lot of how these things played out already especially with the roman roman matches so it was nothing really too surprising to hold on to towards the end of the show but i appreciate all the love and support you guys shown on the channel road to 150k and i'm still here on the speedy youtube wrestling champion world appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace